just a short video today. Um, I've come down with a cold, I guess, so I don't feel like talking for a long time, which will probably make the enemies of Christ happy. Um, I'm very overwhelmed with sadness at what's going on with YouTube. Uh, people that have come out with these heretical doctrines, they refuse to repent. And then when we do what we're supposed to, which is to separate from them, some people have difficulty. And some will just uh, unassociate with you altogether. Uh, there are some that I thought that while they stood for the truth, uh, that would be more important to them than just people. But they will side with the likes of Renee, Sin City Preacher, and Edward Finninger, little Pope Edward. He's going to be known henceforth as uh, Pope Edward Richling, because Richling is his brother. Well, neither one of them two are my brothers. You see, if people don't bring the doctrine of Christ, you're not to bid them Godspeed. And the doctrine of Christ is to not deny the Son. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, has always been the Son of God. I've given plenty of scripture. Proverbs 30, verse 4, Daniel chapter 3, verse 25, um, the psalm, kiss the son lest he be angry, and now perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Um, example after example, uh, people take this, uh, this verse about today have I begotten thee and they twist it. When scripture clearly shows over in Acts that, um, that it's also applied, Peter also applies it to um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Over in chapter 13, uh, verse 33, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, notice present tense, Thou art my son, the I am that I am. Jesus is the I am, the eternal son. He never changes. And those that deny that, they're anathema. And there's been some that's, that's left the channel. They're angry. Um, I pick on their, their great leader. Uh, they don't like it. Uh, well, that's too bad. I'm going to choose God over men. We ought to obey God rather than men. And I'm not on here to be a man pleaser. I'm not here on here to please you. I'm not going to tickle your ears, okay? You've got itching ears. There's plenty of teachers that'll take care of that. Not me. I'm not the one to do that for you. Okay, it's going to be the truth. And the truth hurts some people. The truth divides. Uh, but you can't have real Christian unity without the truth. It's impossible. But look here. In that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. So now, we see that it's not just about his incarnation. It's about his resurrection. You see, that verse also ties in with Revelation chapter 1 and verse uh, 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. You see, Jesus, oh, the wonderful name of Jesus. He is the Word of God. As the Word of God, He declares to us everything that the Father has to say. Um, because He proceeds forth from the bosom of the Father. And he is the first begotten of the dead. Okay, uh, Colossians puts it this way: He's the firstborn. Okay, from the dead, he has the preeminence. And Jesus rose from the dead, never to die again. And when you take these evil doctrines, they destroy your hope and they destroy the love of God. And when you do that, you don't have real Christian fellowship. You don't have unity. 
I've been um, I've been attacked in comments and so I keep my comments locked down and I'm glad that I do because you're not going to use my channel to spew your foul evil doctrine I'm simply not going to permit it now Jesus Christ rose from the dead never to die again and think about this brothers and sisters there were others who rose from the dead before him, but they died again. He rose from the dead never to die again. He is our hope. He is the only begotten Son of God, okay? He has the preeminence. Um, he is not just in the creation. He is over the creation. He is the creator of all the creation, okay? And to demote Jesus to just being a son born in time, um, when you have so many other clear scriptures that show clearly from the Old Testament that he was the Son of God prior to his incarnation, um, that's blasphemy. It's wickedness, it's heresy, and I will not tolerate it and fellowship with any people that declare such a thing. No, not even one tiny little smidgen, one iota. None. Um, you do not bring the doctrine of Christ, you will not be called a brother. Now there are some who have been in error and realize the error and they get out of it, but there are others who dig their heels in ever harder, um, ever greater, and they reject the truth because they're stiff-necked, uh, just like the Pharisees, just like the children of Israel of old, because they do not love the truth, they have the spirit of error. And it is a most grievous thing but some of the things regarding Pope Edward, um, and some of you may not like that title, I don't really care. He sets himself up as a Pope, see, because he acts infallible. Um, and the problem is, um, his so-called truth doesn't come from the Word of God, it comes from men's books. And the error that he's propagating is not new, okay? It was resurrected by this group of people called uh, the Plymouth Brethren, I believe. Um, like over a hundred years ago that deny that Jesus is the eternal Son of God that he became the Son in time listen you change the doctrine of Christ one iota however seemingly small or insignificant it seems it is of a most grievous error because error begats more error and people who teach this who believe this they go farther and farther and farther away from the truth because they've rejected the truth. If you reject that Jesus is the eternal Son of God, you've rejected God. You do not have the Father, you do not have the Son. And so I refer to him now as Pope Edward. Um, and so many of the false doctrines that he's teaching uh, now make sense to me as being error in light of this teaching. Uh, for example, he calls Martin Richling a brother and I understand why. You see, they both have created gods. They both have created Jesuses. Um, it's just that Martin's was 4,000 years earlier than uh, Edward's. So you have these different popes running around um, declaring themselves infallible, uncorrectable by the Word of God when clear scripture shows that they're in error. Clear scripture shows that they have rejected the words of the living God. And so they set themselves up as infallible people. You got Pope Dinlinger, uh, Pope Brian, His Unholiness, and then His Unholiness, Pope Edward. Um, then His Unholiness, Pope Martin Richling. So you have all these popes running around proclaiming their so-called truth, all of them in direct violation of Scripture. So one of the things that Edward teaches is that babies aren't alive until they take their first breath. And now that makes sense because Jesus couldn't have been Jesus, the Son of God, in the womb. He couldn't have been until he took his first breath at his incarnation. When he was born, drew his first breath in this world, he became the Son of God, according to Edward. Well, Scripture has already been given multiple times over and over, showing that that is not the case. And the same Scripture, Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. Um, is used multiple times to show not just his incarnation, but to show that his throne is eternal. Thy throne, O God, is eternal in Hebrews chapter 1. 
So he's always the son of God. His throne is eternal. And do not, listen to me people, do not fall for the lie that I'm teaching something that says that the son is inferior to the father. The Jews knew better. They knew that a son was equal to the father. By Jesus claiming to be the son of God, he was making himself equal with God the father. They knew it. Why? Because Jesus being a son was not just merely a servant. He acted as a servant on this earth. He humbled himself unto death, even the death of the cross. But he was not a servant. And even on this earth, Galatians chapter 4, we're looked at as servants. But we are sons and daughters of the living God. And angels, see his whole twisting about angels being the sons of God. That's perverted and twisted because angels have never been sons. They are always servants. So they will never be sons. They have never been sons. If they had been sons, it would not have been lost. But all of these doctrines are perverse and wicked that he teaches, and they're all interwoven together. And they're all put forth um, to deceive people. And there are so many people that are under the spell. And I say spell because it's doctrines of devils. They're under the spell of his teaching and others like him. Um, he, of course, is going to make a video or seven, probably refuting it. I don't know and I don't care. Uh, because I don't listen to his voice anymore. Uh, these people that, that spout these evil doctrines, there is no point in listening to them. There is absolutely no point because they're going to argue around and twist things and say, well, he's making a subordinate, eternal subordinate Jesus. No. God's throne, the Son of God, God the Son, Jesus, his throne is eternal. And he is equal with the Father. Why? Because he inherits all things. Everything that the Father has is for the Son. I've said these things many, many times. Okay? But now they're coming into sharper focus. They're coming into more clear light because of all these things about angels um, always being servants and never sons. And we inherit all things in Christ because the Son is equal to the Father and the Father gives everything to his Son. He is one with the Father. He is equal with the Father as the Son of God. He is not any less. Edward is the one that's creating an inferior Jesus, an inferior God, an inferior being who is not God at all. The Son of God is eternal. He has always been the Son of God. He proceeded forth from the bosom of the Father to show us the Father. And all of these wicked heretical teachings are interwoven in together. And I have stood against it for a long time, and I'm not on here to win a popularity contest. I'm not here to take your money. I'm not here uh, for validation. You know, when I first started getting attacked, and I want to share this with you folks, um, when I first started getting attacked, I would get upset, and I would say, someday I'm going to be validated. Someday I'll have validation um, in front of God that, that what I taught was true and right. That may be and that may not be. Um, all that matters to me is not my own validation, but the glorification of Jesus Christ. If what I teach glorifies and honors him, that's all that matters. And um, the wicked people and their heresy be damned. And I mean damned to hell. The only thing that matters is that Jesus Christ is glorified. Um, whether I'm... Uh, praised by the Lord or not, uh, it's irrelevant. As long as Jesus is glorified, that's all that matters. And all these false teachings that Edward promotes, even his twisted nonsense, hyper D nonsense about Romans chapter 10, um, it, it all comes into focus now because this is a man that takes every doctrine and has no understanding. And folks, it is not Brian Denlinger versus Edward Finninger Okay, that's like saying it's Armenianism versus Calvinism. They're both lying, stinking wrong. Okay, they're both pr promoting doctrines of devils. They both uh, lack understanding of the Holy Spirit because they're prideful and arrogant and puffed up and they do not know anything. And then there's the issue with Renee. Renee is trying to backtrack and say that that's not really what she says, but she still clings to the idea that Jesus was the Word before he was the Son. No, he has always been the Word. He has always been the Son, eternally. 
And it does not make Jesus inferior or subordinate to the Father uh, in the sense that he's less than, because he inherits all things from the Father. He is equal to his Father. Um, my son is not inferior to me because he's my son. He is my equal. He has my name. He has everything. Um, the Father bestows everything upon the Son, even his own name, everlasting Father. He gets every good thing. Um, and in Christ, we inherit all those things too. But do these false teachers share all the wonder and the glory of those wonderful truths with you? Or do they just keep reading from dry, dull books, men's books? You know, um, for me, I couldn't even imagine in the darkest recesses furthest away in my mind that anybody outside of, of mainstream Christianity, folks that I would call brothers and sisters, would even question the eternal sonship of Christ. Um, this was a new thing to me. It just absolutely floors me and it grieves me and it makes me want to cry that there are brethren who who call themselves brethren, who call themselves saved, who would deny the eternal sonship of Christ. That would actually fall for these lies thinking, oh, well, Jesus became the son as, at his incarnation, when clearly I've showed you scripture after scripture in the Old Testament to show you that Jesus has always been the son. That, that Hebrews declares, thy throne, O God, is forever. That this day have I begotten thee is also applied to his resurrection. The power and might and glory of his resurrection and his resurrected eternal body and we're promised one just like him. And yet, and yet, there are so many wicked people running around spouting off things that they do not know because, quite simply, they don't believe. And so because they don't believe, God will not show them the truth. He has left them with the spirit of error because they would not hear the truth being spoken to them. They would not believe the word of God. Little W, big W. They won't believe it. And I'm even reminded of, uh, I guess Tammy Morrison put out a short video the other day, Victim to Victory for Jesus, uh, saying that I had some health issues. Don't be concerned about that, Tammy. Um, you need to be concerned about you calling Edward a brother Okay, because he's not. He is a liar and a deceiver. He's a pope. He sets himself up as infallible. And I know there's going to be people who think uh, that I'm just being mean-spirited. I'm standing for the truth. Some people will like it and some will not. But all of Edward's grievous errors are intertwined and he is uh, too proud and too arrogant to humble himself and admit the truth. And that is the truth. So I call on these false teachers, if you really belong to the body of Christ, if you really are a son or daughter of the Lord God Almighty, then repent of these heresies, all of you. And don't associate with these people and fellowship with them because we are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are to be separate and apart. We are to come out of this false wicked people and touch not the unclean thing. We're called to be separate. We are called to be a holy people, a peculiar people, one that wholly depends upon the Lord and not on the hand of man, not on the wisdom of man and man's books. So if any man does not bring you the doctrine of Christ, he is anathema. Some of you are not going to appreciate that. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the truth one iota. I still have to say it. So that's going to be it for today. Till next time, God bless.